Hello, listeners. Welcome to the Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon podcast. Today, we have someone who is in the solar industry, right? So if you've been listening to this podcast, I've had an energy consultant. I've had someone from hydrogen energy and I think biomass energy. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's a, the previous episode, you can check it out. And this actually, this guest today was introduced by one of my previous guests. Uh, she's an expert in digitalization. Um, she, her name is Li Ling. And we actually worked together before and she was one of my students. But today she introduced Zeph Lin with me, right? So I actually did my research if you go through and search for Zach ETH Lim, you'll find a video of him sharing of his um, experience in the pandemic and how his company grew in the pandemic. So Zeph Lin is the founder and CEO of Verdant Solar. Verdant Solar, I, I believe. Verdant Solar is a reputable solar system supplier. So he works with a lot of homes. Uh, that's what he, he shared with me before this interview. So he's providing customers with diverse, sustainable energy solutions. Focus, of course, on solar. Um, hi, Zeph. Welcome to the show. Hi, well, thanks for having me today. Yeah, so did I say it right? Ver, Verdan, uh, Ver, Verdan Solar? Yeah, Verdan, Verdan Solar. Verdan yeah. Solar. All right, right. Thank you. And uh, the first question I have for all my guests is, what is your favorite Kung Fu movie? Ah, okay. I can't really recall which, which uh, movie is my favorite, but the favorite mm -hmm. actors is always uh, Jackie Chan. Uh. I think it's not just... just just kung fu, but at the same time, very humorous. So I like, I like, I like him a lot. Any Jackie Chan movie? Is it that you, you will just watch any? Is it if it's Jackie Chan you watch? Yeah, yeah. I can't really recall which which name is my favorite. Yeah, but, but his his movie is actually one of the best that I like. So so okay, maybe let me probe on that a bit, right? So Jackie Chan has yeah. a career, I believe. Ah, uh, right now is twenty years. I believe spending forty years of uh, his career. So when, when did you start watch, watching that Jackie Chan? Was it the 80s, the 90s, or like which period? You, you can watch it now, but still watch the old thing. But which period of Jackie Chan's career did you start watching him? Uh, secondary school. So it's about, about 90s. So it's the, his, uh, maybe his police story time. Is it the police story? The, yeah, the yeah, Hong Kong yeah, time? Yeah. yeah, so he had a... Yeah. He had a, a more like a Kung Fu, Kung, old 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 classic movie time he had the you know we call Usia Pian la. so he had the old classic movie period <laughs> where he did the drunken that's master that's not something that I'm, 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 I'm yeah that's not something that I'm aware of but yeah my, yeah so my, you know those newer ones yeah so some, some of my guests they say oh I watched Jackie Chan and I watched him in Drunken Master wow that one is uh, I think before <laughs> both of us were born that time uh, Drunken Master is the first Jackie Chan movie perhaps Uh, it's like he was Six pack, uh, very ripped, and still you can find a lot of TikToks and videos out there of Drunken Master. And then the the one where we watch mostly is the Police Story era, or the most mostly the the I would say the height of Hong Kong movie la. The height, the yeah. the nineties yeah. is the height of Hong Kong movie where Michelle Yeoh also uh, did Police Story with him, and then uh, after that he went to Hollywood. So the two thousands he was mostly Hollywood. <laughs> so he, he did a lot yeah. of things in Hollywood, yeah. and then uh, recently he's doing uh, a lot of many other things as well. So, okay, Jackie Chan, it is. Thank you so much for, for sharing, Zef. So, while doing research on this, I saw many of your previous interviews, but could you share again, you know, how, how is your journey like? Um, I, I heard that, you know, you started the, the solar company. So, how did, did you get into the solar industry? Ah, okay, I think, I think uh, it's, not, it's not really like intentional, but it's, 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 it's a series of things that, that make me came into this uh, industry. Uh, when I graduated, I was an uh, engineer working in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the factory in Penang. So so I do I do programming for machine, uh, some R and D work there, uh, and and it, it it makes me think that I want to create something. It, 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 I, yeah, because as a, as a programmer and all that thing, sometimes you will feel happy because the things that you program and all those things end up to be applied on the machine. And, and, and when you see how the machine works and all that, you feel excited. And so it actually gave me the the entrepreneurship kind of uh, spirit from there, uh, and, and and from there I kind of like move on thinking of okay, maybe uh, I don't want to be just an engineer. I want to be an entrepreneur, but I have no idea what to do by then. So I quit. I quit the job uh, as a as an engineer, and, and and went into the sales job. So then thinking about right. As an engineer, I don't know how to communicate. I don't know how to do sales. Probably it's hard for me to, to do business. 
So by doing in sales, probably I'm able to meet with some boss and then I'm able to learn how to close sales and all those things. Then I have some opportunity from there. So this is how, how I started. Only until 2013, uh, I have a friend that actually kind of like introduced uh, Sola uh, in this to me. And I found that, oh, it's something good for the environment also. Thus, I actually came into this industry in 2013, which is about uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. So after sales, you went into into starting this company where you, you supply so, supply solar um, energy, right? Yeah, we are the uh, service provider for uh, solar. Perhaps before that, oh, I actually started a few businesses, easily seven, eight small businesses. And, and uh, some would be, one of them would be doing some trading, trying to bring in some gift and, uh, from, from China, selling to the corporate and all that things. But it doesn't work up, and then I also have uh, three, three uh, web startups because in 2011, 2012, it's, it's, it's where people talk about startups, right? Groupons and all that will be in that era. So we also think that maybe we want to build some company and then just sell it off to, to, to someone and then we can make some money from there. So I actually have, 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 have um, uh, three, three that kind of business with, with friends, trying to make some money and all that thing, but, but it doesn't uh, work out, right? We, we, came out with a website and all that. We spent a lot of time uh, doing website and all those things, but, but we don't know how to scale it. And then uh, after that, we just, we just let it die that way. I even go into an uh, exhibition, uh, ran a hall in uh, Mid Valley uh, Convention Center, trying to do uh, some, some exhibition, but, but it doesn't work out also. And then I also even uh, have so fair before with my friend in, in KL. Uh, but after three years, I just sold it off uh, with losses with two friends and all that. So, so, so that is, is, is some, some background of my entrepreneurship because when I came out, I actually just wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I don't know what to do. So everything for me is opportunity. Everything for me is I just put a lot of effort and all those things to it. It, it, don't, it, don't, it don't make me any money. It lost me a lot of times, but it's a good journey because it makes me more sharp when it comes to opportunity. It makes me more focused now when it comes to other opportunity. I think, I think when it comes to entrepreneurship, one of the challenges that the entrepreneur has is that we always think opportunities is good. We always think that strategy is about saying yes to everything that we come to us, right? But perhaps sometimes the best strategy is also knowing what to say no, right? And, and I, think, I think that kind of experience kind of like trained me to, to say no to, 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 to some so-called opportunity and also make me more disciplined. So, so yeah. Perhaps Verdant Solar is not the first company that I started. I think I registered probably nine to ten companies before. So yeah, ten years ago, and you said the power is actually saying no. But ten years ago, right? Solar, I believe, is something new, and still is something new today. Um, but what made you say yes to solar? Um, I would feel it's a few things. First, is definitely uh, is something that is for the good cause. Right for the environment, the more the more we install, uh, then which means that we are making good for the environment, better, better we are making uh, yeah. So 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 it, it fits to, to even that kind of current purpose, which is uh, to make the world green, greener, a uh, greener and better place to, to stay. Uh, and the second one is definitely so. Uh, I see the potential of this industry, right? Uh, other company, uh, other other countries like like Germany, Japan, and US, Australia. They are so at once compared to us, and then the way there's so many company or so many houses installed and all that. So, so I do believe sooner or later Malaysia will be something like this. Yeah. So, so, so because of that, uh, I just, I just do think that this would be a good industry for me to to come in and try to do something about it. Yeah. What better thing than to make profit and also make the environment better, right? Yeah. 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 So, so like. Even even today, ten years later, right, twenty twenty three, solar is still fairly a lot of untapped potential, right? Uh, I live in a condo and I don't think anything is solar yet, and and you you know what? One of my previous guests, um, he actually he is a renewable energy. I didn't know this, you know. He he talked about using renewable renewable energy in the industrial way, and he said in Malaysia, even though we get sunlight eight hours, but only four to three hours can use. Actually, that's why you tell me lah, right? So, so like being solar today, what are the major challenges that you see, especially you know in the adoption here in in Malaysia? 
Yeah. Uh, I think some, some statistic that in Malaysia, we have about, the whole Malaysia, we have about 4 million, probably slightly more than that for landed houses. But up to now, today, there's just about 30, 30 each thousand of houses that installed with uh, solar. So which means that what you mentioned, it's definitely a very big uh, industry that, that we, can, we can go into. And, uh, and why, why, why we have this kind of uh, challenges and all that thing, why the take rate is not so high for now. Uh, my personal thought would be first, uh, no doubt the cost of uh, solar installation uh, actually dropped a lot. Easily about 60 to 70 percent drop compared to uh, 2013, where I came into this industry. Right? Like 12 kilopic system used to be about 120,000 by then, will be about 30 plus, not more than 40,000. So that would be that would be good because the, the price has been getting more competitive. However, 30,000, 20,000 is still some big sum money for a lot of people. Right? Not many people that can able to fork up. Uh, 20,000 that should have just uh, for, for this uh, solar system. So I, I do believe this is definitely one of the things that uh, actually hinder people from uh, uh, installation. Um, and the second thing would be, I think, would be the public awareness. Uh, I always thought, because I've been in this industry for the first 10 years, I always thought that should be a lot of people actually know about solar, how it works, and all those things. But from time to time, I actually meet with people and I found that there's a lot of people that actually don't really understand how, how solar system works. How, how, how by installing solar, I can save money. They have no idea about that. And then they still think that uh, solar is very, very expensive. There's still people that told me about, oh, uh, no, it's, it's not something worthy because I, I need to spend 100 over thousand just for my house or that. So they are still at the 2013, 2014 kind of era, right? So, so uh, and, and only I realized, oh, basically, there's still a lot of public awareness that need to be to be done in this area. Uh, so I think that will be the, the second second things that, 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 that can be improved. Uh, I think the third one is also about the the, the consistency policy. So solar is still policy driven uh, industry where in order to install we need to apply uh, with the government especially SEDA, Sustainable Energy Development Authorities. Uh, so once we got the approval uh, to install, uh, then only we are able to help our customer to, to install. So, so there's a quota in, in these systems. Uh, definitely, uh, for the past six years, this quota are getting more and more by the government uh, compared to uh, 2013 and, and all those. Where one year, probably, we have just less than 2,000 houses that can be installed. So now we are more blessed because we have more houses that can be installed. Having said that, it's still uh, not enough. Uh, for the demand that, that we have for now. So, so there's these few uh, challenges that, that, that we, we see uh, that, that hinders the adoption of solar system. Thank you, Zef. Uh, may I add a fourth one? Hearing that, right? You talk about policy. The fourth one is still government subsidized the normal electric. <laughs> Electric. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably the main one. So when they stop the subsidies, I that correct me wrong, but but once they stop the subsidies, then people will oh yeah, actually now it's not subsidized so much. You know, they will they will start to install solar. Am I am I right? Perhaps perhaps you are right because uh government actually start to have some rumor, some some news. They did, they did they did uh, they they did they reduce to... the subsidy in the middle middle uh the middle to high usage a bit lah. Correct, not a lot. Correct. Oh, yeah, yeah, so so but, but perhaps when, when that happens, the solar industry actually uh, grow fast, right? Mm. Uh, especially those that are actually affected by this uh, tariff hike. Uh, they actually came, uh, I mean, they explore solar as a solution to help them to, to, to reduce their energy bill. Yeah, so you are right, you are right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, speaking, because uh, just to give the listeners a bit of context, uh, me and Zef are talking in the month of um, October, uh, November and the budget for Malaysia was just um, shared and built uh, about three weeks ago and one of the item one of the item lines was reduced subsidies for electricity <laughs> for the yeah. middle and high income so so I think believe if that kicks in uh, when that kicks in and then uh, when when the, they reduce the subsidies in the future definitely a lot of people will look into renewable or solar energy also so perhaps they already done the first time uh, on mm. uh, first of July I think first of July those that used to spend about 700 ringgit for their energy bill, 
if they don't reduce their consumption or they don't install solar to reduce their consumption, uh, their, their, their bill, basically their bill will be increased by about 25%. So they need to pay slightly close to 900 ringgit mm. by consuming the same uh, amount of energy. So that's why starting from July, the market are actually getting a lot of people actually inquire about solar systems. Oh, okay, okay. You need to get the awareness of this out. <laughs> so I think a lot of people were like, oh, okay, 700, now I pay 900. Okay, okay. Then, then solar is like, you know, one time, uh, sort of one time, la, right? And and it, Malaysia's weather all is, is good for solar, right? Yeah, I mean, we are in Aikoto, so definitely we, uh, our weather is suitable for, for solar system. And what you just mentioned at the, at the early, early of this program is that uh, we have... Definitely more than four hours of sunlight, right? But however, in terms of why you mentioned three, three, four hours, that's because something that we call peak sun hour. So, so peak sun hour is measured at uh, one thousand watt per meter square. So, so like morning sun and, and 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 maybe a bit of raining sun, it could be just 200, 300 watt per meter square. So, so it won't be able to reach the the peak sun hour. But three hours of those three hundred thirty three watt per meter square equals Berlin to uh, one hour of peak sun, so 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 that's why it, in average we are talking about three and a half to four hours of a uh, peak sun hour la. Yeah, but but not 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 generally about the sunlight that came out from 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 the sky. Yeah. Okay, so I, I have a side question. Um, so I know you're from Kuantan, right? Uh, yeah. and then actually I'm from Taiping. Uh, in Para. So Taiping is famous for rain. Um, rain. Yeah. We get uh the highest rainfall. Uh, of I don't know how to calculate but basically the highest rainfall in Malaysia right? Uh, yeah. so like like when I was growing up like half the football field will rain half no rain man. it's like rain is normal for us uh, so yeah. like even like places like Taiping still we can get enough so sunlight is it? yeah definitely uh, different area they will have their peak sun hours and all that like, mm. like places in north that we, we can see like Alosta Penang they are there definitely has one of the best sunlight uh, uh, that, that, that we have uh, compared to here, compared to Ipo, like uh, Taiping, right? Even, even Taiping rain a lot, but the difference wouldn't be too huge. Will be less than 10% of the difference from, from, from Penang. So yeah, area definitely affected in terms of that, but but even the return will be still 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 quite okay. Oh, since you mentioned a lot of the states, right? Maybe a side question. So yeah. far in your experience, which state has the highest adoption of residential solar which is it i mean def definitely clang valley clang valley yeah, okay definitely clang valley i oh. mean first clang valley is definitely one of the we have branches in uh, Penang and Johor and and, and in clang valley which is be based in Aradamasara PJ so among, among these three region region uh, definitely clang valley okay. will be contributed the most to us and then you follow by the uh, the other two, which is Johor and, and, and Penang. Okay, okay. Thanks for, for sharing that. So maybe uh, next question. This occurred to me while, while I was doing research uh, on you. So the when you shared at the Gateway Church on your experience in the pandemic, you said you had one of the best months in June 2020. Uh, so is it something that COVID or awareness happened? What happened in 2020? Best month in June 2020. Uh, somewhere in 2020, I remember what you said. It, basically, you had one of the best months after the lockdown, basically, is what you said. If, if, if it doesn't occur to you, it's fine. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think probably when you talk about best month will be the, the, the sales that came in. Yeah. Yeah, so so because during COVID, uh, the time, we are bit, definitely afraid about, about, about the, uh, uh, the sales and all that thing. So, uh, but something that, that really... Um, Surprises is that uh, once COVID opened, people are willing to, to spend money. And perhaps because of a uh, lockdown, uh, more people actually work from home by then and all that. Yeah, yes, we still increased. Thus, our sales and our revenue actually increase uh, uh, when, when, when the lockdown is uh, open. Uh, yeah. I see. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Uh, good. Good to good to hear that. I, also, I remember in in the COVID time, you also we we think oh don't want to rely so much on government <laughs> because government like stop supplying maybe lah stop supplying electricity. So at least we have our own. <laughs> so maybe maybe that is something something as as well. And yeah. So thank you so much for for sharing that. So maybe my next question is like um you have 
in, we have done 10 years, right, since of, of this in industry. Italy. Yeah, so maybe you can share with us um, some of your maybe client success story or uh, examples uh, that, that will make a difference in your clients. Um, I, I won't point out the single customer. Uh, like for mm. us, we are dealing with residential. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a lot of customers that, that actually uh, install in, into this. Uh, will be some, some success story that I can, I can share with a customer that, that texts me about, about, about they are so happy after he installed uh, solar. First is that now he actually no need to uh, pay any TAB bill anymore. Right? Every month, you just need to pay the three ringgit, the minimum fee to, to TMB. So he's so happy about that. Definitely, it's not one of the case that, that we will recommend. Because normally, we will advise customer to save uh, up to about, uh, you still have 100 ringgit or 77 ringgit because uh, anything below than that will be something subsidized by the government because the tariff is just 30 percent, 30 percent. But somehow, we do have customer that actually, their motivation is they don't pay the MV bill. So, so when they install solar, and they see their bill is actually negative sometimes and all that thing, they'll be like so so happy. They are so happy. So so they actually uh, uh thanks us for, for, for doing that. And uh, definitely a lot of uh, uh, feedback from our customer will be also on the uh, experience size and all those things. If you look into our Google review and all that, you will see a lot of good review that, that thanks us for, for delivering uh, good services to them. So I think it's always motivating. For me and also for my team, and we have customers that actually appreciate and thanks us for whatever that we have done for them. Thank you, Zef. Okay, so maybe uh, I have a Clang Valley question. So this is a KL question. I live in a condo. So this yeah. is uh, it's a condo, and many people in Clang Valley we cannot buy, cannot afford landed property. Yeah. <laughs> so I, maybe a question to you is, I I uh, is that. Why are there not many more condos or multi-story uh, residential that, that do solar? A yeah. uh, few, few challenges that comes to uh, condo installation. First, uh, this will be under the management because the roof is not belongs mm. to the owner. Yeah. Right. So, 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 so normally it will be the management need to make the decision to spend that kind of money uh, for, for saving, right? And most of the time, uh, installation for condo will be more expensive due to uh, this is on top of a higher roof uh, and then some wiring that need to bring down to, to the ground floor or whatsoever, it, it could be, be more. Uh, and also, um, sometimes also we do find that when it comes to management come, coming into decision and all that things, it could be harder. Right? We, have, we have someone that actually from the uh, management, he, 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 they did mention about sometimes they try not to push for something because uh, yeah, a lot of it's not their own money and then they're yeah. also afraid they're, they're pushing too hard then, uh, then then they might need to be accountable for that and all that thing. I think this is something that is still happens uh, that, that we are facing for now. Yeah, so so because of that, uh, the, the adoption is actually uh, lower compared to landed houses. So maybe let me flip that question around. Uh, so... Why are there not many new developments that say, okay, we are eco-friendly and then we have solar in our in our condominiums, for example? Like they don't need to go through management, they just, you know, when they started off, it's just solar. They, so why I have never seen that, or is that something coming up? Perhaps when we talk about a developer ready solar home, uh, normally the the query that came in will be landed. Okay. Houses, right? Those developers actually build landed house, they actually about, about they, they want to build a solar ready home. Mm. Uh, so far when it comes to condo, yeah, like what you mentioned, uh, we have last that kind of uh, inquiry. Um, I have no idea uh, why. I've no idea why, but it's definitely much lesser compared to uh, landed uh, development. Having said that, we don't see a lot of uh, landed property that actually ready with solar. One of the things is, is, is also because of uh, our current policy, we are not uh, so much of uh, we are still we are still waiting for 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 the the policy that specifically um, involve the solar system in uh, developer units, right? Because we 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 
for solar system, we need to apply for quota with, with SEDA before we can install. And we have no idea, like the developer, they launch a house three years later, what would be the policy, what would be the quota line, is there a quota and whatsoever. So, so, so it's hard for the, for the developer to actually make the kind of decision and, and all those things. So, so uh, but I mean, definitely we, we receive a lot of inquiry about our development. And I, I do also see that more and more developers are actually uh, building that kind of solar radio home. So probably three years, five years later, we'll see more in the market. Thank you, Zef. I hope to see more as well. I think uh, the government, if they are moving towards this, and we are moving to net zero by 2050. <laughs> so I think this is one very important step towards that. Uh, so yeah, maybe uh, last few questions is like, maybe what is your next milestones, right? So last time, I remember you said on another interview, you said you, your burden solar wants to be public listed and things like that. Uh, so what is your next milestone in the near future? Okay, I think, I think uh, I mean, we always open about uh, listing of those. I mean, to be listed, I mean, we need to do a lot of things. So so, so it's always always open and when the time's ready, then we explore. Uh, but 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 we always want to make ourselves a, a listed ready company, whether it ultimately become listing or not. I think I think that wouldn't be something that we we will we will define ourselves successful or not successful because of listing. Yeah. So uh, and apart from that, uh, I would definitely something that we are pushing now would be also the product expansion. Currently, we are at the residential solar business. Uh, we are definitely looking into some like EV charger battery system, even smart home system that, that, that could actually benefit to our ecosystem, right? Because like, like this year alone, we probably will install about 1,000 plus customers. So, so we have about 3,000 customers in our pool and we are adding adding thousands of customers every year. So, so, so when the pool is getting bigger, definitely we are looking into some value-added things that we can offer to, to them. So, so product expansion is something that we are, we are looking at. Uh, and the next will be also about uh, geographical expansion. Uh, last year, we focused on expanding to Kinei and Joko. And uh, now we are also open, open to the overseas market. If, if we are able to find the right partners and the time is ready, so these are the two things that we are definitely uh, looking uh, forward to, to achieve. And, and the, the third one is also we want to make weather solar. I want to make weather solar, not just a solar company, a clean tech company. So so we also start to invest in, 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 in um, software development, some apps that uh, we are able to differentiate ourselves from, from our competitor. Like, like, I mean, a few months ago, we, we started to launch our uh, customer experience app where our customers are able to check their uh, status uh, in the apps. They are able to make payment from the apps uh, and then they are able to also check their referral leads from the apps and, and, and all those things. We are, we are also looking to put into, uh, they are able to check the system performance. Uh, the apps are able to tell them how, how, how your system performed to your neighbor and all those things into the apps. So that uh, you will you will create more value to our customers. Wow, thank you. It sounds exciting indeed. Like I, I see the I see the connection, right? You already give them solar energy. Why not have the smart home system to reduce your usage so you save even more power? Uh, so then there's so many things you are doing. So what? Well, good to hear that it's uh, uh becoming uh exciting times ahead. Looking to new markets, new technologies, new energy, etc. Thank you so much. So yeah, before we wrap up, I think last question, right? I see that you came on this interview with a jersey. So is that a Liverpool jersey? Am I right? Yeah. Liverpool yeah. away. Liverpool I'm away. Liverpool, Liverpool fans. Yeah. <laughs> Hardcore Liverpool, Liverpool fan. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. What are your hopes for Liverpool this season? For sure, champion. Champion, right? Okay, I, yeah. I think it's possible. I think it's, it's, <laughs> it's really possible. Uh, I'm a football fan, not specifically Liverpool. Which team you support? I, I don't... I, I play fantasy football. So whoever oh, okay, is in my okay, fantasy okay, football okay. team, I support. <laughs> and uh, I have okay. uh, Darwin Nunes. I have high hopes for Darwin Nunes and Mohamed Salah this season. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. and, and, yeah. and the, you the, pick new... the right You pick the right player. And uh, my favorite player, Liverpool player at the moment is Sir, Sir Boslai. I don't know how to say his name. Yeah, Sir Boslai. Wow, yeah. he's, so he's good. really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, uh, Zef. So um, I wish uh, for the audience, you can follow Zef on the various social media platforms. And of course, uh, the Verdant Solar as well. You can check out their website and find out what their product offerings. Uh, thank you so much, Zef, for being on the show.
Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you so much.